Well, the great thing about corn is that it will tell you when it needs something. So if those leaves aren't dark green, probably needs a little help. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all out there having an awesome day. It is Wednesday, April 12th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we need to check on our double row corn experiment behind me here. We need to feed those corn plants. We need to heal those corn plants. We'll talk about why we do all that. And then later in the video, we're gonna go take a look at our raised bed taters. So our little double row experiment with this white Eden sweet corn is going pretty well so far. It's looking pretty good out there. It would look a lot better had we not had to deal with that army worm issue, which we're still dealing with a little bit. I've not been able to eradicate them completely. I have minimized the damage greatly. Some of the plants that were eaten on grew back. Some of them didn't, like the ones that were in this little patch right here. Still getting some nibbles on some of those leaves like you see right there, but I'm not losing bunches of plants by the night like we were. So back when these corn plants were just six or eight inches tall, back when we did that video telling you about the army worm problem, I had sprayed with spinosad two times right after I figured out what was going on here. Since then, I've sprayed once, and after we get some rain tonight, I'm probably going to spray them again. Looks just like it's going to be a persistent problem that I'm going to have to deal with on my sweet corn this year. So even though those army worms have taken out a few of our plants, we still got a pretty good looking stand of double row corn here. I do wish these plants were a little greener, a little more dark green, but we're gonna solve that today. Now, before we fertilize this corn and talk about how much we fertilize corn, I'm gonna revisit something we talked about right when this corn was sprouting, and that was our relatively low weed pressure in this plot. Had a lot to do with the tarping process, the cover crop we had on here before the tarp, grazing with the chicken tractor, that whole system. Now it's not weed free in here by any means, but our weed pressure is pretty minimal and has stayed pretty minimal. We still got a few little weeds popping up in there. That has a lot to do with how much rain we've been getting lately. Had we not gotten so much rain, probably wouldn't be hardly any weeds at all. There are a few popping up in between those plants, some in-row weeds, but we're gonna take care of those today too. So I'm sure most of you do know, but if you don't know, let this be your moment of enlightenment that corn is one of the vegetables we consider to be a heavy feeder. It's a lot like onions, needs a lot of nitrogen to really grow out and do its thing. So as this corn grows, we wanna see those leaves have a nice dark green color to them. If they're nice and dark green, that means we're very likely to get some nice big ears of sweet corn. So if we accept the fact that corn is a heavy feeder, we have to feed it well, the next question will be, well, just how much do we need to feed it? Now our corn fertilization program has changed a good bit over the years, especially with the introduction of our chicken tractor here. But I'll tell you how I used to do it and then how I do it now. So just like most everything else we plant, we always start out with a somewhat balanced pre-plant fertilizer. That's what we do with this corn here. We put down some Nature Safe 855 in the planting furrow before planting our seeds. And then once the corn gets up and going a little bit, I usually inject some water soluble fertilizer into the corn when it's young, something balanced. I usually use the AgriThrive general purpose and we'll usually inject that one to two times when these plants are small, say 12 to 18 inches tall. So with the pre-plant fertilizer and the injections, I'm trying to give it a decent balance of N, P, and K early on. But once those plants get a little bit taller, once they get up to say two foot tall, like some of those plants out there are now, that's when we want to start just hitting it with the nitrogen. Now, whatever nitrogen source you use will probably depend on what's available to you. I've used plenty of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer in the past. It works, but it can kind of leave your soil zapped after the corn grow out. So over the last few years, we've been using this Nature Safe 1300, which works just as well as the synthetic stuff in my opinion, and leaves our soil in a lot better condition when the corn is done. Now in the past, before we started using the chicken tractor, I would side dress my corn two times. So I'd side dress it when it's about this tall, and then I would do it again when it gets about knee high. But since we started using the chicken tractor, I only have to side dress the corn one time because we've got a good bit of nitrogen addition from the chickens 
being on this plot back in the winter months. So we take our side dressings from two down to one with the use of the chicken tractor. We don't have to fertilize as much. So we've got our 1300 in our dog's bucket here because everybody knows it works better when you bring it out here in a dog's bucket. And I can't find the normal scoop I use to side dress. So I've got this bigger scoop right here. Probably won't do a whole one of those per row, probably about three quarters of a scoop since that one is a little bit bigger. Since we've got double rows, we've got to go down both sides with the side dressing. We want to side dress each individual row there. So this might take a minute, but we'll get it all put out there. All right, so we got all nine of those double rows side dressed on each side. Took almost two dog's buckets full of fertilizer, which seems like a lot. But there's a lot of corn plants out there. There's almost a thousand corn plants out there. So it takes a lot to feed that many sometimes. So we'll cover up all this fertilizer in a minute when we heal this corn, but just a little heads up, if you're not using organic fertilizer and you're using some synthetic fertilizer, be very, very careful not to get it on the leaves because it will burn them. And be especially careful not to get a drop of synthetic fertilizer down inside that corn plant. Also, it's important to note that my corn fertilization regime here is not a one size fits all solution for everybody. Depending on your soil conditions, you might need to use more fertilizer than we use, or you might not need as much. But the great thing about corn is that it will tell you when it needs something. So if those leaves aren't dark green, probably needs a little help. Now when you're growing these super sweet varieties like we're growing that grow out really really fast you don't have a lot of time to mess around you got to be on top of your game if you're growing some of the older varieties like silver queen you got a little more flexibility there as far as fixing the problem so now that we've got our fertilizer down it's healing time and if you can plan this out and do it right before rain like we're going to get later tonight that will work perfectly now since we've got double rows here we're not going to be able to use the wheel hoe and just zip up and down these rows and do it quick and easy we're going to have to do it by hand with the old garden rake here so the reasons we like to heal corn are very similar to the reasons we like to heal taters but i'll go through three good reasons real quick here number one in row weed suppression so we get some little weeds popping up between those corn plants along the row because those corn plants are planted kind of close together hard to get in there and manually weed so the one way to conquer those weeds is just to cover them up with more soil and the second reason for healing is plant stabilization so as these corn plants get taller especially when they get loaded down with delicious ears of sweet corn they get a little top heavy if you get a big windstorm rolling through it might try to blow those plants on the ground so if we mound some soil up around those plants they're less likely to fall over during some high winds and number three, kind of the obvious reason that we've already talked about, we want to bury that fertilizer that we just put down. So we just leave it on top of the soil. It could wash away. It could just sit there. But if we cover it up with soil, kind of push it towards those corn plants there, they can access it a lot better, use it, and hopefully it'll make those leaves turn nice and dark green. So this might take me about 20 minutes or so, but we're going to get it done. All we're doing here, especially raking up some soil, right up around those corn plants we don't want to do it so hard that we end up pushing our plants over so we want to be a little bit delicate with it when they're this size but we're just going to work our way down all these rows get them healed up all right all right all right i sure do like the looks of that now it's not near as tall as we heal taters but it should be good enough for right now we feel like we need to heal them again when they get a little taller we can do that as long as we do it before they get too tall and we can't reach over that double row and now all we do is make sure these corn plants got plenty of water and fight those dang army worms so assuming no rainfall i'll usually run this drip for about four or five hours every other day and those corn plants will drink it up in a hurry and i told you earlier after we get this rain tonight or tomorrow going to spray for worms again and probably just get on a schedule of spraying for worms every two weeks from here on out. So now that our corn is taken care of, let's take a look at these pretty taters here in our raised beds and see if we need to add any more soil to any of these. So these beds are overflowing with tater plants, which is what I like to see. So this bed has the Sharpo Mira variety on my left 
and then a fingerling variety on my right we've already added a bunch of soil to these i don't think we can add any more i did mess around and i think let some of these plants get a little too dry a couple days ago you can see some of those leaves are wilted up a little bit I've been checking my in-ground taters, but I wasn't checking these as much, and this soil drains a lot better than my in-ground plot, so I have to water these a little more often. Noted, I'll keep them watered better from now on. Let's go check on this one over here, where we have this really tall, bushy variety. This is rose gold. It's probably the biggest tater plants we have at the moment and then right here we have elba which was slow to get going but it's looking really good now now these elba plants are the only ones that we didn't fill soil to the top of the bed with we still got a little bit of room there it'll be hard to work in there with all that foliage but we'll see what we can do well i don't think i've ever done this i've done at least over a thousand youtube videos in my lifetime and i've never accidentally deleted some footage before i got it edited but that's what happened here so anyways just to catch you up we got some more potting soil added around those elba taters right there it was all the way to the top of the bed just a couple days ago We've got some hard rain today it sank down a little bit but that should be good enough to get us a nice harvest from those so I hope you enjoyed the video today. Be sure to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you want to see our corn harvest from last year when we grew a variety called Yellowstone, very similar to this Eden variety, just a different color, be sure to check out this video right here. We'll show the entire process from harvesting to getting it ready to cut off the cob, cutting it off the cob, a neat little tool to do that with, and even putting it in the freezer. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.